all around the Basilica of St. Paul there are all the portraits of the popes, so each single pope. Huh. Tradition says, but this is very silly tradition, that when the spots on the Basilica of St. Paul will be over, there will be the apocalypse. I know that sounds like ridiculous, but this is the Roman tradition that says that when the last spot will be filled with the face of the last pope, there will be the apocalypse. Down there, where you see the light in between the columns, of course, there is the portrait of Pope Francis, the one who is in charge right now. While, and this is more interesting by our point of view, you see all the scenes around the windows. This is the history of, the history of life of St. Paul. Modern, painted in modern times, because imagine that here inside all the ceiling and all the paintings have been destroyed by the fire. There is written on top in Latin. There is all the history of life of St. Paul, so his predication. Here, for example, is Into Apud Aquilam et Priscillam. He was in Corinto at the house of Aquila and Priscilla. Contulerunt libras et com. Then, then we continue here on the side, and we have the moment of the first predication of Christians. At the same time, on this other side, on this other side, we will have the travel, the trips of Saint Paul. But let's go in order from here. We have the Holy Spirit arriving. We have the predication of the first Christians. Among the first Christians, there is this man, Stephen, Stephanus, who's converted here. He is giving his predication, and for this reason, he's killed. And if you follow me a few steps, right here, you can see. After then, the moment of the of the killing of Saint Stephen, there is the conversion. In this case, the conversion is not represented with the horse, the horse we already saw outside. There is a conversion with Paul laying on the ground in this sort of vision. This is the moment of the conversion of Paul. They decided to skip the part of the horse that, as we were saying, was a metanoia, so a vision, but not a conversion, he arriving directly to the conversion moment, right here. Then we see Paul arriving in the next one, in the, in the first of his trips. And on top you can see was written, Precipio tibi in nomine Jesu Christi exhibe abea, that means, I will give you the responsibility in the name of Christ to spread this message around that you can find right here and then you continue with all the several different trips so you can see Paul going to is written on top Antiochia then Paul giving predication in the area of Tarkia from here his predication in Antiochia you can see him in the temple token and down there crede in Deum et salus eris tua, domus tua. It means that Paul, during his predication, these are parts of the letters of Saint Paul to Philippe, to Thessaloniki, and so it says, believe in, uh, in uh, the Lord, and the Lord will be your home and your health. And here you can see again Paul giving his predication until when he doesn't move to Corinto in Greece. Corinto is the one before the last one, down there, where it's written, he went to Corinto and he stayed down there in Aquila and Priscilla house. And after that, the last scene of this line, the last one on the right, is Paul teaching in Corinto. So people bring in him their books, their texts, asking Paul to give an interpretation. Then we move on the other side. So it's not You can see Paul escaping from Corinto, then moving back to Jerusalem. You can see that he's going on the boat. And then you can see Virum Cuius S. Zona Alligabunt Judei. He went in the area where were the Jewish. Then, once he was, once he was down there, he gave his predication in the temple, but 
the Hebrews who were there during the big debate about the, circum the circumcision, so if it was good or bad doing that, they ordered to arrest Paul. Paul said that he couldn't be judged by any other, any other tribunal than the Roman one. And so he had to leave and go to Rome. And in the next one, we see. And then you can see Paul moving, moving to Roma. And down there you can see Paul carried in front of the tribunal. You can see the Roman soldiers around him and Paul entering in the tribunal. So it was so you can see here, Paul carried to Rome, Paul, or better, Paul arriving in Italy. Paul carried to Rome, you can see the Roman soldiers and the coat of arm of Rome, and Paul pointing in that direction. Then you have down there Paul in prayer, and then Paul in front of the emperor. So one, two, three, and four, up to the judgment, in front of the emperor, down there. You mean uh, this, the old It says, it says, Paul, you have to go to Rome, and once he's in Rome, he prays, and down there you can see Paul in front of the Roman emperor. You can see the emperor sitting on the throne, Paul in front of him, a Roman soldier presenting him the, the case of Paul. The last, the last two scenes, they are not related with the death of Paul. Here you don't see the death of Paul because, uh, you know, this is the grave of Paul, so they don't show the death on the sides. Down there, there is Paul in two other moments, two moments of his life before than the judgment. So the story ends with the judgment in front of the end. But why did they take this choice? Actually, it was a choice of the modern artists. Probably in the original paintings, in the ones before then, 1867, there was all the history of life of Paul. But when in the 19th century they decided for this restoration during the kingdom of Pius IX, they decided not to represent the death of Paul inside the basilica. In fact, you don't see anywhere the moment of the head cut of Paul. Because like you said, it's so open.
baptismal candle of the Basilica of St. Paul, baptismal candle that we light for the baptism in, the, in each single church, not only in St. In St. Paul Basilica, there is one in each single church. This one is particularly interesting because it's one of the few ancient objects surviving the fire. It's the original one of the 12th century and it's actually a masterpiece of Arnolfo di Cambio, Italian artist of the 12th century, who was the one who did also the canopy of St. Paul. That's actually the decoration for the altar of the basilica. This is actually the level of the original Roman road and the level of the original Roman city at the time when they built the basilica. So the basilica that we see today is actually higher.